people need an income that's guaranteed to them. If you lose money to taxes, you're never getting that money back. You need to get serious about adding some lower risk. Greed. I don't like greed. The thing to be afraid of, honestly, is the thing that we're not thinking of, the black swan event. There's a tsunami coming. Bye, bye, bye. Welcome to Retirement Coffee Talk with Sharice Rivers. Just coffee talk. There's a lot of noise, a lot of chatter. Who do you listen to? Who do you not listen to? You have to stay focused. A fun and informative look at the issues of wealth, retirement, and protecting your life savings. These advisors out there that were trained to sell, 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 and have all these fees, 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 they don't want to talk, talk, talk about this product because <laughs> so they make less, less, less money. <laughs> and now, Retirement Coffee Talk with Sharice Rivers. Welcome once again to Retirement Coffee Talk with Sharice Rivers at Zinnia Wealth. Online, of course, ZinniaWealth.com or 833-368-3680. We do this show every single week and we talk about the issues of retirement, but we also want to talk about the issues that are affecting you when it comes to living in our area. And Sharice today has the mayor of Ocala to talk through some of that. All right. Well, welcome to Retirement Coffee Talk. We are super excited today because we have our recently elected mayor, Ben Marciano, and um, he's here to discuss a lot of things about the city of Ocala yeah. and some initiatives and um, why the 1% tax and half penny sales tax is incredibly important for our community moving forward. So thanks for joining us today. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. At some point, I won't be a new mayor. I think I've been in office nine months now. So I wonder <laughs> when the line is that I pass that I'm not the new mayor. But anyway. Yeah, I until you have 12 months on your belt. Okay, got it. That's the that's right. my, my benchmark. All right. Good so to, um, Ben and I got to know each other back in March, if I recall. And I knew we'd be friends when he came to me and sat next to me and said, who are you? Why are you here? And what is your purpose? <laughs> <laughs> Very direct. <laughs> Very direct. And I'm like, Ooh, that was a lot to unpack. Aww. So yeah. So that's why we're here today and to help um, the community understand a little bit about some of this voting and what's going on on the ballot and sure. that kind of stuff. So yeah. why don't you share with us your vision for the city of Ocala and what are your top priorities as you're settling into this role? Yeah, first of all, we live in a great community. You know, people ask me, why would you want to be the mayor? Like, what is it about it? It's definitely not the pay. I promise you that. But we really have an amazing community. I love who we are. I love the values of our community. And um, it is a really great place. I have family that visit from New York and they always come to Ocala and when they're always like, Ben, this place is special. And I say, well, what is it about it that makes Ocala special? And they always say the people. And I think we have a special place with our people's hearts. I mean, you're an example of that and who you are. You can see it. You know, my vision is, is that we don't lose who we are as we continue to grow. What makes us special as a community? But we are going to grow. And, um, you know, it is an exciting time the way I look at it. I love the development of our downtown. And it, it really is a, a great place. My vision is, is that we would be a mentally and physically healthy community that works together for the betterment of the community. Like when I define who we want to be, that's who I envision. And a lot of my initiatives and what I do is focused around that. The number one responsibility of the mayor is to oversee the police department. I really love working with our police chief. I don't know if you know Mike Balkin. Mm -hmm. He's awesome. Uh, we're blessed to have such a good leader. My job is to support him, you know, and I do that. Um, we've had some great initiatives in place and done a really good job making sure our community is safe. That's why people are moving here. When you talk to people, they say, well, first of all, we're still an affordable place to move, but they want to feel safe. And um, they might be leaving places they don't feel safe. And we are a safe community. So, But also my initiatives are heavily focused around improving people's physical health and mental health. You probably mm -hmm. see articles come out ranking Ocala one of the most unhealthy cities in the state of Florida. And Scary. to me, that's, that's unacceptable. If you don't have your health, what do you have? And I tell people this all the time. I've been in the business for 25 years of improving people's health. You can focus on your health now or you can focus on it later. You got to make the decision. Do you want to wait until something happens or do you want to do now uh, where you can really make sure that you're living life to the fullest? You know, I just lost my grandmother the other day and I watched her the last five years really just not be able to enjoy life. So my goal is to get our community health of active and moving. We've put a lot of great initiatives in the community that are already starting to see great benefits. But then also the mental health of our community is, is not good, you know, and it's not good across the country. I use this platform to share my story of recovery. Um, I overcame addiction and homelessness. I believe that God put me here to uh, use this platform to give people hope. And I do that. Uh, people ask me, why are you so vulnerable and transparent? I think it gives people hope, but we put a lot of focus on making sure we have the right facilities in our community to get people the help they need. 
we're putting good communication plans together to educate people how they can find the help. And um, we can we can see it's already making a big difference. Wow. So Fantastic. Well, I'm sorry to hear about your family. Well, I appreciate it. One. Yeah, it was it was it was tough. But, you know, it is life, right? It, it is, is life. Yep, and we talk about it here on our show a lot and with a lot of our clients. But that was a lot. So for our listeners that really did not know who you are, that says a lot. You know, you I've learned that you have the heart to serve and your team around you is just, you know, they're all for it and what you do. And we're happy that you're, you've are you stepped into this role. We need somebody that really cares. I mean, I think everybody cares, but you just have this heart. So I can appreciate that. Thank and, you, um, you know, I think the listeners have heard a lot about, you know, this election and what's going to be on the ballot. And I think some people are a little bit confused and they, they've heard about this tax mm-hmm. that we have to vote for and not vote for for our local community. And I would love for you to explain how it benefits our community. And first and foremost, you know, our first responders like the OPD and really go through that because I don't think a lot of people understand what the 1% and the half penny taxes is really for at the end of the day where we're missing some things. So the penny sales tax, first of all, it's been in place since 2017. We're already paying Mm -hmm. it, right? Um, But it does go support your your public safety and your infrastructure for the community, which to me, if you don't have that, you don't have a community. You have to have public safety. And we talked about how important our police department is. I also work a lot with the, the fire department. But for us specifically, it's been a lot of our equipment, our vehicles, our radios, stuff to keep our guys safe, training facilities. And without that, I, I, we wouldn't have a, we wouldn't have a police department. And, um, you know, so it's extremely important. Um, as far as the fire department goes, uh, several of the fire stations have been built with that, the fire trucks. I heard a story and before we had the penny sales tax in 2016, we had a call for fire trucks and two of our fire trucks broke down on the way. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine being, yeah. you know, in an accident on the side of the road and fire trucks can't make it to you because they're broken down? That's the reality of what would happen if we don't have this penny sales tax. Um, it, you know, we lose, we lose the opportunity to keep our community and our citizens safe, right? And then as far as infrastructure goes, is it's our roadways, yeah. and um, it's which is so important in any community. Right. So um, there might be some hesitation out there from the residents here in Ocala. And can you, you know, explain or maybe just voice, you know, they're afraid how it could financially impact their personal economy yeah. and how to ensure that if they vote yes, to make sure that these benefits will go to where they're actually supposed to go to. Yeah. So first of all, by law, we have to use it on what it is exactly designed to to uh, be used for. So public safety infrastructure, it's very transparent. I was talking to our CFO yesterday. It's it's public information. Anyone can request how we're using the funds, but we have actually created a separate account specifically for that money, and then it has to be used specifically for that amount. The way I look at it is I know your investments. So when we look at this this penny sales tax is that everybody that comes into our community pays it. So right now, 30 to 40 percent of people that come into our community are visitors that are passing through Ocala that might be going to WEC or visiting Silver Springs or other areas in our community. And they're going to pick up a share of that. OK, if that's eliminated, it still has to be a tax. Mm-hmm. We're just going to have to put it on our property taxes, which we're then going to pick up that 30 or 40 percent. So when we talk about. Um, using your money wisely, this is a really wise thing to do to also have the people that are visiting our community pick up a share to be able to support our community. Yeah. So did you guys hear that? Literally, it is helping us so that hopefully our property taxes don't go up, but other people who are visiting our territory are also joining in on building our community. So it is very important, and I see that. And yeah. man, you really conveyed that perfectly. I appreciate that. I want to talk about some examples of how the funds will benefit the community through sure. infrastructure and development yeah. and really to reassure, you know, what can the residents expect when it comes to development and improvement, and what are they going to see? Yeah. So, you know, we, one of the things that if you go downtown, we we are starting to really build up our downtown. I love visiting downtown. I'm down there at City Hall, but um, we're starting to have major parking issues. So we're, we're building a parking garage. I was talking to Pete about the, the other day. Our, Pete is our city manager, and that's going to start construction. But we have had some significant road projects over the last couple of years. We'll continue to do that. 
I tell people, so I own a business and every year I put money in reserves to put back into my business to keep it up to standard. So updates in the facility. If I were to not put money back into the club, eventually it would shut down. It's the same thing on your infrastructure in your community is that Mm -hmm. if you're not putting this money back into your roadways, you have no roadways. How are you traveling, right? So we have a plan of how we're going to constantly update our roadways. The sidewalks is a big thing that we're going to continue to do in different areas to keep people active and healthy. And then the Southwest 44th extension. I'm really excited about that project. Yeah, that's going to be a major roadway that's going to alleviate, alleviate a lot of traffic congestion in our community. And I was talking to our staff and we're looking to hopefully have that on uh, where that will be open in the first quarter of next year. And that's going to be tremendous for the relief of some of the congestion we're experiencing today. Yeah, that's amazing. Roads, OPD, we're going to have Michelle Stone in here talking about all these. We, we have so much going on with those 1% sales tax and um, the half penny tax. So it, it's lots of information people need to know before they run to the ballots and say no. And yeah. um, as we wrap it up, Mr. Mayor, can you really give one takeaway, one like message that could resonate and help people remember like why this is so important for the future of our community. Yeah. Well, and one of the messages and one of the things that I've tried to do as a mayor is uh, you see a lot of divisiveness today in our country, right? I think we can be different as a community. We can, we can disagree on things, but at the end of the day, we are a community. And I think we got to look at how we can come together and support one another. And this is about not only supporting one another, but making our community who it needs to be. When you think about public safety infrastructure and our kids, where else would you want to invest your money? So I would ask for our citizens to really understand that. I know that people have maybe been frustrated. I've heard some of the things with growth and um, other aspects, you know, but this money is used in the way that it does to support the things that we need in our community to be who we need to be the fabric of the community. So, and I tell my prayer is that we work together and we come together in a community for the good of our community. And let's be an example for the country, how we do that. Yes. Well said. Well said. I sent you a text this morning. Yes. Did you, did you listen to the I song? Did. I did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He probably thinks I'm in a nut job. Every once in a while, we send texts to staff and friends and locals just to brighten up their amazing day. And uh, it always has something to do with Christ or something. Like I that. love it. I love it. that. And I think, you know, one of the things that I try to do is that too. think of somebody throughout the day that I can send a message to and build them up. You know, whenever you're down and it's easy, you got some, we have so much going on. The fastest way I've, I've found to change my mood is find someone to serve. Oh my gosh. Find so someone true. to serve. Add value to yep. them. Add value to other people. And it's a truly a gift to you. It is. So, yep. Well, thank you so much for being here and sharing your initiative. I think people just really need to hear that. And I'm excited to have you back on maybe in a few months, six sure. months. Let's hear what's going on, what's new. I know we have some plans in the future. And we just really appreciate you taking the time because you have a lot of things you're dealing with right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm busy. They're getting their money's worth out of me as the mayor. That's for sure. No, it's good. <laughs> but I appreciate you. Thank you for all that you're doing. You're welcome. Thank yeah. you. Stay tuned as we continue our retirement coffee talk conversation. And how does the local community and taxes actually relate to retirement planning and there is a great analogy so we'll see you soon Welcome back to Retirement Coffee Talk with Sharice Rivers at Zinnia Wealth. Online, it's ZinniaWealth.com, Z-I-N-N-I-A Wealth.com. If it's time to talk about your retirement, why don't you schedule a meeting? Let's get a date on a calendar and just say, okay, let's dive into it a little bit here. Here's what my 401k looks like. This is what I've done for retirement. Is it going to work? And Sharice can do the math on that, and we can find out those answers for you. It's really, really a very good meeting. Now, one of the things that we just talked to the mayor about, Sharice, is the whole idea of looking forward to the future, Mm -hmm. seeing what that looks like, and then trying to figure out how we're going to get there which is exactly what you do every day for people nonstop. Let, let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. I, you know, I think retirement savings is like the example of this 1% and a half penny tax. It might seem like a small percentage now, but the impact over time is tremendous, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Just as Marion County and the city it relies on funds to build the roads and support citizens, your retirement relies on this consistent contribution, tax strategies, and long-term care planning. I mean, This is what we do every day. Mm -hmm. Planning ahead is key and knowing where we stand today and where the outcome could go in 10 years, 20 years, and 30 years. 
is a big part, but it, it's, it starts with you, the individual, right? Mm-hmm. The county and the city would, would struggle without this tax. And then it would hurt us in the long run anyways, because our property taxes would go up. So when you face unexpected financial roadblocks in retirement, whether it's rising healthcare costs, inflation, and, or let's say long-term care, it, it could be, uh, there's emergency, just unforeseen expenses, get a plan for that ahead of time and kind of see the road ahead. Because if you can control the what and the if and the potential hazards, because you see them lingering, boy, does that solve a lot of problems in the future and ensure more confidence and what the message is all about and what your journey is going to be like. Well, as you, if you, you picture yourself as a mayor of a city and, and you, first of all, people are going to come to you with the problems and, and they're going to say, okay, here's what we've got to solve right now because this is an issue. Uh, then they start saying, here's what we got to do in the future. More people means more traffic, means more roads. Uh, there's a lot of things, more mm-hmm. infrastructure, all these different things. So you're looking at what's wrong now. And then you're looking at what could possibly be wrong in the future. And then you're figuring out a plan for that. And really, I mean, Cherise, think about this. People come to you and they go, do I have an income shortage? Did I save enough? Is there going to be a tax problem for me in the future? Most of my money's in a 401k. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, my parents uh, went into a nursing home. They had Alzheimer's. I'm worried about that for me. I mean, most of what we do when we come to you is trying to solve problems and what you do is say, OK, let's come up with these solutions and come out with a positive outcome. And that's really what the mayor is doing, too. Exactly. And, and it's like our tax plan. You know, do we or don't we create a tax plan? And I truly believe there's no investment plan and there's certainly no income plan without knowing the tax plan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, should we roll some of our IRAs over to a Roth right now? Does that actually make sense? Well, how are you going to know if you don't put pen to paper, we don't build it together because you can't get that service from, you know, a CPA or an accounting firm, you have to come to a financial firm like ours and a wealth management firm to really dial in because, you know, if you could see, okay, this is what it's going to cost me in taxes the next 10 years and my beneficiaries when they inherit it versus, oh, if we roll this amount over, this is really what my tax bill looks like. And wow, we've saved hundreds of thousands to the beneficiary. Then we put, you know, 700 to $2 million back into the state by planning ahead of time. That's what we're trying to do. And the message is pretty simple here. Preparation is key. (laughs) That's what we do here. You know, whether it's for the county or your personal finances, is building that solid foundation, which I hone on each and every day when we sit down with people, ensures your future is going to be a little bit more secure and it allows you to enjoy the road ahead without having as much worry about patching things up later. Mm-hmm. You're listening to Retirement Coffee Talk with Sharice Rivers of Zinnia Wealth. We just finished up talking to the mayor, Mayor Ben Marciano, and uh, just talking about some of the things that he has to deal with and he's asking for help when it comes to us, the residents of our county. And of Ocala. And, you know, one of the things that comes to me is they had to kind of get this all ready by Election Day. There's Mm -hmm. deadlines for the mayor as well. There's deadlines for us as well. He knows Mm -hmm. that the way that the income comes in is the tax base, the taxes that come in. So if they need more income, they have to put that on the ballot. And that's got to be there by Election Day. We also have deadlines in our life financially. And, Mm Sharice, we're actually coming up on some. Uh, You think about end of the year planning, December 31st. You think about next year on December 31st when the Trump tax cuts could be a eliminated and that might change some planning as well. There's deadlines in our lives too, isn't there? Yeah, like Medicare. We got a deadline. Oh, yes. Up. <laughs> We're going to talk about that in our next segment yeah. too. That's true. Medicare is the season and, you know, one of the biggest things and you can tune into our old podcasts. All of our shows are on Retirement Coffee Talk on all the outlets, you know, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, you name it, and on our website. You know, a big deadline besides Medicare is taxes. If you're going to roll an IRA to a Roth, you need to do it now. Mm -hmm. If you're going to donate to a DAF or donor advice fund, we need to start planning now. And I wouldn't be waiting until December because all, you know, we're in crunch time. And if you go to our website, we do have an end of the year checklist and start checking some of those things off. And maybe you don't check it all off, but maybe the most important things for you are if you're retiring, you might have to make a decision on a pension and you've got to decide within the next month or two months. You know, there are some big decisions to make 
on those pensions, whether, you know, you should take the lump sum or do I take a hundred percent benefit and nothing goes to my spouse and I buy life insurance, which I don't think is a good idea. There's a lot of strategy involved and there's a lot of end of year planning. So get it ahead. Let's pre-plan. Let's keep it simple. And at least let's dial into the three big things that need to be tackled by the end of the year. Protection, income, and growth. That's what we talk about here on the show all the time. You know what else I think about correlation between these two? You know, during political season, we listen to the candidates and we try to figure out which one makes sense to us, what message appeals to us. And at the same time, Sharice, you kind of have the same thing when it comes to people listening to your message and which message makes sense. There's a lot of financial shows out there nationally and locally. There's a lot of financial advisors. There's uh, advisors of all different kinds with different qualifications. And we've had this show on the radio for 11 years, and we've been consistently preaching that Sharice is here in the retirement space, and that's who she helps. She specializes in that area. And mm-hmm. that's our message to you is we specialize in income planning, tax planning, helping you with estate planning, all the different things that you need in the retirement area, Sharice. And that is hopefully our voters are going to say that message appeals to me. Yes. And I I want to reiterate, don't worry about what your neighbor Bob is doing or your family (laughs) members. Everybody has their own four walls, their own roof and their own foundation. And everybody's plan is different. This is not cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. I am telling you that because when I first got into this industry almost 20 years ago, I thought every retiree is a retiree and y'all retired the same way. And over and over again, I can convey that that is not a true story and that does not um, make sense to me because everybody has their own personal silos, their own money they save, their own inventory, their own, you know, hearts to serve, whether it's to give money to charity or just help out at churches or, or whatnot and dialing into who's getting your money. You know, is it going to be tax free or is it going to be all taxable? And, you know, how do we not run out of money and how do we invest your investments properly? I mean, you know, everybody's hearing about all this noise about potential recessions this time next year, whether it happens or not, who, nobody has a crystal ball. But what are you doing about it? How are you going to protect yourself if there is a recession in 12 months or mm-hmm. 24 months or whenever it happens? Because eventually it's going to happen, right? We're starting to feel some pain points now. What have you done? What are you doing? Have you talked to your advisor? What is their plan? And if the, uh, go talk to them. You need to be asking these questions right now. There is no better time than the present. And if your advisor says, well, we're all going to go down and, you know, and then we're all going to go back up together and you're getting ready to retire thinking, nope, that's not going to work anymore. Mm. You know, you need to find the advisory team that is going to be strategic. That's going to build safe strategies and income strategies and growth strategies. But do they even have an exit strategy? That is key, which is one of our biggest things that we do here with tactical management and investment portfolios. So go ask those questions. If you're not getting the right answers, come see us. Yeah, I think that that, that might be the bumper sticker of the day. What are you doing about it? And, and we yeah. see all this stuff going on right now. We're actually going to uh, spend a little time on that coming up in our next segment. We're going to talk about markets and the job numbers and the Fed and the interest rates. And we're also going to get into Medicare a little bit. But that, again, is what are you doing about it? Are you reading those headlines? And is it just keeping you up at night? Or are you actually participating and saying, okay, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to have a plan. That's what we do here at Zinnia Wealth is build a plan and just say, there's a lot of stuff out there. Let's build a plan for as much of it as we possibly can. Put the ball in your court and not out of control. Give us a call, 833-368-3680, 833-368-3680, or use our website, ZinniaWealth.com, Z-I-N-N-I-A, Wealth.com. There's a gold box there. It says complimentary retirement consultation. Let's talk through it and find out what your retirement's going to look like and how Sharice can help. Again, 833-368-3680. We are going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll go through some of the numbers. We'll go through some of the economy things. And, you know, what do these interest rates mean to you as a person getting ready for retirement? What do some of these headlines mean to you and your money? And certainly the market. You've got money in that 401K. It's going up and down with the market. You need to know what's going on. We'll go through that. Plus, 
Medicare. What do we do about that? If this is the first year, this you turned 65 this year, you had to apply for Medicare. Now you're starting to say to yourself, what else is there? Well, there is a window of what else is there coming up in just a few days. We'll tell you about that coming up on Retirement Coffee Talk. Welcome back to Retirement Coffee Talk with Sharice Rivers at Zinnia Wealth. Online, you can find us, as always, at ZinniaWealth.com, Z-I-N-N-I-A, Wealth.com. If it's time to talk about your retirement, give Sharice a call. Let's uh, let's get an appointment. Let's sit down, talk about what you've done so far to save for retirement and what that's going to mean for you in your retirement years. We call it a portfolio x-ray, or you can go to our website. There's a gold box there. It says complimentary retirement consultation. Just click on that. You'll be on your way. Or call us at 833-368-3680. Well, Sharice, we haven't talked about the markets or the economy and things like that yet, and I know there's a lot of people that are concerned about that. There's certainly a lot of uncertainty that goes there, but we actually did have some pretty good news, a a string of good headlines, actually. Uh, The latest labor report came out, and they were expecting 140,000 jobs added. That number came in at 254,000. So the unemployment rate went down a little bit, and then everybody was worried about the dock workers' strike, and that seems to be ironed out now after Mm -hmm. just a couple of days. So there's some actual good news there, isn't there? Yeah. Yes, uh, we like good news. It makes the market move in the direction we want it to move, usually, right? Right. And, you know, there's, you know, question out there, too, about the Federal Reserve and how they're going to lower rates and how fast they're going to lower rates. So, that, mm-hmm. you know, that's a big concern. And I was just talking to somebody the other day, and then, like, Sharice, I'm really worried about inflation and my dollar in 10 years since everything, the cost of everything has jumped 25% and they're going to stay there. Even though inflation is in control, we're still starting at this higher number. And, you know, we talked about it and we chuckled about um, how the Snickers bar is half the size as it used to be and it costs more. And um, but it's very frustrating for people. So we definitely want to address that. And stock markets, you know, they go up, they go down, they go sideways. And depending on your season of life is going to make all the difference on how you should be invested. Well, you know, somebody said to me, it was a kind of an interesting way to put it. If you were gaining weight, let's say in year one, you gained 15 pounds in a year. OK, mm. not good. Mm. And then the second <laughs> year you gained 15 pounds. So you're 30 oh. pounds up from where you were before. Oh. And then all of a sudden you started losing weight and you lost two pounds and you go, hey, I've changed the course i changed it you know you're still 28 pounds overweight and that's kind of the way the inflation thing is right now it's it's we went up so high and now it's starting to go down but it still hurts and there's still a lot of things out there that are really expensive it is. I don't know why I had to bring weight into the picture. My goodness, it sounds like me right now. It's like, okay, I've lost two pounds, but I still got 10 more to go. And I feel like, you know, as we age, you're like, okay, am I stuck at this 10? And now it's going to go up just a little bit every year. And now I'm going to control myself. I don't know. But I, I will tell it is a concern, Randy. Yeah. P- people are... They're scared of it because they're seeing costs with um, homeowners insurance and taxes and Mm -hmm. all these different things coming out. And they're hearing all the the fear mongers out there and they're they're not sure which way to go and they're not sure who they should listen to. And I would say I, I get it. I get you all. I get the frustrations. And this is why we try to be the voice of reason here on radio and our podcast because how do you navigate the flow of all this noise and the election coming around the corner and make the right decisions and or you don't make a decision all and you let your head get stuck in the sand. And so, you know, this is why we're here. And hopefully these conversations continue to help because we're really going to be breaking down some of these initiatives and the election stuff and having guest speakers come in more often to help with what's happening local, too. Well, one of the things that is uncertain out there is the Fed. What are they going to do next? They had mm-hmm. that 50 basis point cut, and that seems to be have been a positive thing. Now we wonder how fast the Fed is going to continue to move. Do they go uh, slowly or do they get very aggressive on this and, and try to really move the economy forward? This is Chairman Powell talking about the last meeting and how they were going back and forth on how they were going to cut the rate. Kind of interesting. And the bulk of the committee was at 75 or 100 basis points. And there were the votes were on 50 
and that would mean two more cuts. It wouldn't mean more 50s. Ah, okay. So that means we're going to slow roll this. And whenever he says something like that, I think it's a good yeah. thing because the market now knows what to expect. They do it another does. 25% or 25 basis point mm -hmm. cut. The market goes, okay, that's what they told us. And then they don't yeah. freak out. It's true. When you're dropping 50 basis points, 50 basis points, and you use these bigger phase outs, it worries Wall Street. Mm -hmm. And Wall Street doesn't like big changes like that. So it does ripple affect the markets and people's consensus. So absolutely, 25 basis points, 0.25 is perfect, in my opinion. And to roll it out slowly, because how does it benefit us? Well, it's going to keep things a little bit more secure in the fixed interest rate market. Mm -hmm. And it gives us more time to invest for those longer term or even shorter term uh, fixed investments who want security. It's going to help your 401ks. It's going to help your IRAs. And, you know, one of my conversations I just had, it was probably two weeks ago now, and the client says, my biggest worry is my cash money not making as much as it has been since 2022. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy with 4 and 5%, but if it goes down to 2%, I'm going to be upset. That's going to be the one thing that upsets me the most. And I was shocked because I thought it would be maybe a potential recession next year or the year after, and market's crashing, right? But she feels very secure with our philosophy here and our exit strategies and our safe money strategies and our investment strategies. So she said, no, that, that's not my biggest worry. It's inflation and what am I going to do with my cash money? And yeah. I went, okay, so I get that. Let's hope that this is actually going to happen because if it happens fast, it could come tumbling down. So it has to be slow. Um, we don't want to reverse inflation right now. And if you lower rates too fast, it absolutely could catapult inflation yeah. and then interest rates go up. So I'm glad they're talking about this. Well, we all want to try to have a positive outlook on this. And uh, and if you want to sit down and find some positivity in your retirement, we'll, we'll talk about that here in just a second. Give Sharice a call, 833-368-3680, 833-368-3680, or online at zinniawealth.com, Z-I-N-N-I-A wealth.com. Click on that gold box. It says complimentary retirement consultation. Well, speaking of being positive, this is pretty interesting. The National Science Foundation found that the average person has between 12,000 and 60,000 thoughts per day. And according to them, 80% <laughs> of them are negative. Wow. <laughs> wow. Really, yes. Randy? Yes. Wow. Yeah, I, I consider myself a pretty positive person except for my, my sports teams. Uh, you know, for me, <laughs> the glass is not, you know, half full. The glass is half empty, and what's in it is poison. And, and mm. I, just, I, I, I just go into every game thinking we're going to lose. We're going to lose. We're going right. to lose. We're going to lose. But overall, I'm, I think I'm a pretty positive person. But I know that there's people that walk into your office, Sharice. I know we tell them, come on in. Let's do your retirement math. And they may come in going, I just don't think this is going to be good news. Uh, yeah. She's going to look at me and she's going to tell me I got to work five more years or there's not enough or I've made massive mistakes here. And they go in feeling very negative. But we talk many times about that meeting of how when you do the math, it ends up being a real positive meeting. Talk to me about that. It does turn the corner in our office where it does become very positive. I think with education, Randy, it creates confidence mm -hmm. in the plan. But it's hard to have confidence without the education and then without seeing the plan on paper, written out for this year, next year, five years, 10 years, 30, 40 years down the road. Seeing it is believing it is ultimate confidence. And for example, we had somebody come in recently. They came in for a second appointment. Our first appointment was the investment review and just getting to know them a little bit. The second appointment was teaching them about sequence of returns risk and then breaking out the income planning software. And I always say this is where people just are the happiest, this income planning software, because they can see it for the first time. They hear it all the time by different advisors, but they've never seen it year over year, their income going up every year with an inflation adjustable number, whatever number we apply to that income. It also shows the different segments and buckets their income's coming from. But this one couple who just came in, they make $200,000 in income, Randy. Mm -hmm. And they said they're going to retire in three to four years and they only need about 60000 I said, well, where, where is all your money going to now? 
And I said, are you saving it? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, you're saving that much money? And I had to really sit back and relook at the situation. I'm like, well, we do go on vacation. We do spend money. So we start to really put the scalpel to the plan. And I was like, do you guys mind if we at least raise your income to 80000 And they said, sure. And I showed them their $80,000 amount for the next 40 years. And they had family that lived into their 90s. And I said, was your intention to leave your two kids $4 million <laughs> four years down the road? They went, no. And at a very pessimistic viewpoint, they went, oh, well, we can have more income. I said, you sure can. And I said, how does $100,000 sound? Let's start with that. And the husband said, can we start with 125? Okay, now we're <laughs> so getting went, there. Yeah, they went from 60,000 to 125. I was like, sure. And so this is for their phase one of retirement, my first 15 years, because while you are your healthiest, spend your money. But let's put a plan together to hopefully see that the money doesn't run out, right? That's the biggest unraveling part for retirees. They don't want to outlive their money and run out of it. So we're able to show that and then he said, so I can keep buying cars. His, his <laughs> wife looked at me. She went, tell him no. <laughs> and so it was just a great conversation. And now they're not going to retire in three to four years. They're going to retire one to two years. They also thought that they were going to work part time with his business. And he's like, no, nah, I don't think I want to do that now. I said, well, I thought you had a passion for it. And she looked at him and said, yeah, you love it. He's like, I don't love it that much. <laughs> <laughs> so it was funny how it was unraveled, but it's given them confidence to leave early if they want to. They have saved enough. You know, it's not your number. It's your income plan. And I, and I can't reiterate that. And all of our advisors here and our team, this is, this is what we talk about. It's the tax plan. That's the next plan that we're going to be working on is our tax plan. The, we already did the income plan and then the investment plan. And of course, the ultimate is the long-term care plan and the ultimate distribution of your assets at a state plan. So there's a lot of planning that goes on here, but this is why we do holistic retirement planning. We work with people between 55 years to 75 years old that have, you know, $500,000 or more of investments because we're creating a plan with those investments you saved. And we're trying to, you know, use our dollars wisely and figure out what, what is your end goal here? Well, one of the things that we've talked about over and over in the 11 years that we've been doing this show, and that is what happens in that room when Cherie starts the planning process and what is the reaction of people when they come in and they don't know if they can retire, but they want to do the math. And then there's that moment when they go, holy cow, we can retire and we may be able to retire early. You need to know what your retirement paycheck is. It's Social Security. It's your investments. It's your 401k. It's dividend paying stocks. It's annuities. It's structured notes. What's going to pay you in retirement? Let's dive into that deeply and find out. And then you can start planning your life. Plan your retirement. Do the things you want to do once you know that the money is there. Let's do it together. Here's our website. Here's our number, 833-368-3680, 833-368-3680, or use our website, zinniawealth.com, Z-I-N-N-I-A, wealth.com, and hit the gold box that says complimentary retirement consultation. That is, of course, at no charge. We're going to take a break, and then we're going to come back. 65 years old. Oh, it's peak 65. There's so many of us that are turning 65. And what does that mean? Medicare. And the Medicare window opens up this coming week. There's things you need to know. And Sharice will clue you in. Coming up next on Retirement Coffee Talk. Welcome back to Retirement Coffee Talk with Sharice Rivers at Zinnia Wealth. Online, it's ZinniaWealth.com, Z-I-N-N-I-A Wealth.com. And as long as we're talking about online as well, you can go to Spotify, you can go to Apple, you can go to your favorite podcast platform, and our podcast is there as well. If you're listening to the show and you got to get out of the car, you hear a little bit, you want to hear a little bit more. Well, we've got a little bit more for you on your time. You don't have to be worried about driving down the road. Whenever you want to listen, you can listen just look up retirement coffee talk you'll hear segments you'll hear the entire show you'll hear things like well we're about to talk about medicare and if that is on your radar right now that might be one that you want to listen to so check that out again the retirement coffee talk podcast okay so the medicare 
open enrollment window is just in a few days. It goes from October the 15th to December the 7th. Yes, every year like clockwork. Yes, indeed. Now, <laughs> let's start from the beginning here, Cherise, just okay. because my wife turned 65 this year. I said, yep. dear, you have three months before and three months after to apply for Medicare, even though you're still mm. working, you still got to apply. You don't have to pay anything. You just take the free part and you don't even worry about it. So she signed up. We're good to go. That was easy. But there are people now that have to use their Medicare, and they find out it comes up a little bit short here and there. That's mm -hmm. why we have the supplemental plans and mm -hmm. the other things that are now up for, I guess, re-up. <laughs> we're we're, yes. we're looking at those every year to uh -huh. see if there's something better. So talk to yes. me about this, this maze. Yeah, I call it alphabet soup, Randy. Yep. A, B, C, D. Okay. And then F, M, G. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Those are some of them. Literally, it's alphabet soup. So okay. let's start with A and the alphabet. What is Medicare Part A? Well, Medicare Part A are your hospital visits. Okay. And there's six deductibles you can pay in one year, depending on how often you hit that hospital up, right? But the nice thing about Part A is that you don't have a premium for Medicare Part A. That's the beautiful thing about it. Mm -hmm. When you get that red, white, and blue card, that's the one thing you don't have to pay for because you earn that through your FICA taxes. But there is a nice hefty deductible, which seems to go up every year. Mm -hmm. It's over a 1000 bucks, just wow. so you know. But other than that, hospitals covered. And then what is part of this alphabet soup is B. So what is Medicare Part B? So Medicare Part B are your, your doctor's offices, outpatient services and surgeries, things like that. But you didn't earn it. So you do have to pay a premium for it, right? Mm -hmm. And the average cost ranges about $175 a month. And if your income is high, it could go all the way up to $500 a month because there's a two-year look back on your premium for B. So, you, so no matter what, you're going to want B. But B doesn't cover everything. If you have just A and B, there's a hospital deductible for A, and then there's a, a doctor's visit deductible for B. Okay. And a few other things, co-insurance. So um, you also have to cover 20% of a lot of your bills through B. So you're going to want something to cover that gap for A, those deductibles for the hospital, and B, the 20% uh, you might have to pay in some of those other deductibles, right? And so a lot of people are like, oh, 20% is not so bad, but it can add up. I mean, go get an MRI. I promise you, it adds up, right? Then you need surgery. So how do we cover those gaps? So we talked about A and B. And then I'm going to skip over C right now because those are the HMOs and PPOs. And we're going to talk about the gaps in a minute, but let me just go on to D because we have A, B, C, and D of Medicare. D is your prescription drugs. And you need to get a prescription drug plan if you're not with an employer or you're not with a VA. And because there is an, a penalty every year based on a national average every month if you don't get it when you turn 65 or have credential coverage, like we said just previously. So that's our alphabet soup for Medicare. So now that you know just the basics, I want to go back and talk about covering the gap. What Medicare Part A def doesn't cover and what Medicare Part B doesn't cover. And so most people will either get Medicare Part C, which is an Advantage plan, or they'll go out and buy a Medicare supplement where you pay a premium and you can go anywhere in the United States as long as it's medically necessary and the provider accepts Medicare, of course. And a lot of people are doing that now. And a lot of people say, Sharice, ah, you know, depending on the city and the zip code you live in, it can be $120 a month price every month and for you and your spouse each, and or it could be up to $250 a month, depending on your plans. Because now there's other plans. There's the G plan. There used to be the F plan. There used to be the J plan. Those people got grandfathered into them. There's the NMOP plan. No, okay, I'm kidding. There's the N and M plan. <laughs> and all I'm saying is that, remember, this is the Medigap, the Medicare supplement. They cover the majority of what Medicare does not. Now, if you go with a G plan versus an M plan or an N plan, N is a Nancy or M is a Mary, right? Um, not everything's covered hundred percent, but the majority is. So you definitely need to align yourself and understand what those are. And we'd be happy to sit with you to go over that. 
because we've been doing this for 20 years and Medicare is complex and confusing and you want to get it right the first time. So yeah, you can go buy a premium and all the doctors will see you as long as they accept Medicare and it's medically necessary. So you can do that. But then there's those people that say, yeah, but I've got 20 postcards this month and it says I can have free insurance to cover the gap to Medicare. And as long as I follow a network of doctors and or use the out of network and I pay a higher price, I can do that without paying a premium for most of the plans. And you can. Those are your HMOs and those are your PPOs. And they've been handy and they've worked well. But I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of news coming down the road here. You guys are going to hear about it very soon because do you know that the doctor's office, Randy, on average, for every person who signs up on an HMO or a PPO plan, that doctor's office gets somewhere around $1,000 a month. So that's $12,000 a year, whether you use it or don't use it. And I think the government's realizing this is costing them too much. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see prices going up on those Medicare Advantage plans, which means more people are going to be like, well, the price is going up or some of them are now having bigger premiums are they're now creating premiums to them and or my copays and deductibles go up then why would I just go on a Medicare supplement plan and a lot of people are going to move that way and I highly highly recommend people move to a Medicare supplement versus advantage plan because you have control of your health care you can go where you want if you don't want to go to Shands and you want to go you know somewhere South Florida or you want to go somewhere in New York Chances are you can go. That's the whole point of it. You pay for what you get. So and, let's stop right yeah, there because ahead. I think this is really important because this Medicare window opens up between October 15th and December 7th, and it happens every year. If something changes in your life, this is what I've learned from you, Sharice. If you have a new diagnosis, if there's a new treatment, different plans have a different emphasis and different coverages. So if you have diabetes, if you have a knee replacement, it, there might be a plan that you need to look at that would cover differently. The one you're in right now might be not the one you need. So you have to start to look at the other ones. And this is the time of year when you do that. Yes. So if you are in a Medicare Advantage plan, one of those HMOs or PPOs, this is your time to say, hey, you know what? I don't want to be in a Medicare Advantage plan. I actually want to go to one of the supplements. I think it's worth paying a premium. So I have freedom of choice. And so this is the time period to do it. You know, after December 7th, you know, you don't get so many choices to do that anymore, right? Unless there's some sort of special circumstances, which is far few in between. So you want to take advantage of this. And if you are in an HMO or a PPO right now, this is also your time to change. Maybe you have Blue Cross Blue Shield and you've realized your prescription drug, one of them went from $5 to $50. And that might be just enough reasons for you to go shop the market and go look for United Healthcare, go look for Humana, go look at, there are so many plans in every county. It's based on your county. And maybe it's time to shop again. And I highly, highly recommend that you go to those lunches and dinners for Advantage plans and learn all about them if you're really confused. We tell people on our clients all the time, bring your mailers in that you're getting from all these companies and let's hone in and see, you know, what is the most value to you? What are you looking for? And then we'll give you a recommendation on who we refer out for those different plans here locally. And does it make sense to do a Medicare supplement? Because we sit here and we do Medicare supplements for our clients because we feel like that that is a bigger value than the HMOs and PPOs. But there's an affordability there. You know, some people are like, I just can't afford that extra hundred dollars a month. So the Vantage plan very well might be better for you. But even those are the Vantage plans, people move towards those Vantage plans because they get, oh, we get a free gym membership, Sharice. Oh, we uh, get over the counter and you get some vitamins and toothpaste and this and this. And if you have diabetes or certain health conditions, there's, you know, a couple of companies that refund part and sometimes all of that part B premium that we spoke about earlier. And that could just be, you know, money in your pocket. You might need it. So I get that. So I'm going to be very curious to see what these big changes are going to be over the next year or two, because they might not be giving that money back or they might be putting premiums or really raising co-pays. And I just have a feeling a lot of these doctors are going to say, okay, let's just get out of the Advantage plan and just stay with Medicare and accept people with those supplements. That's a big possibility around the United States. And if that's the case you got to go shop for new doctors. So just so you know, when you sign up for this HMO and PPO this season or switch around and or if you're turning 65 for the first time, you need to check your doctor's book 
And not only check that your doctors are in a book, but you need to pick up the phone this October, November and say, Hey, Dr. So-and-so, are you still going to be part of this plan next year? Because the book is never accurate for next year. Uh-huh. They have not communicated. The contracts aren't officially signed. And then next year, they're not even on there. And you can't change your plans or get out of it most of the time. So you got to go find another doctor. So if you don't want to change your doctors, make sure they're in there. So that is that is key. I think that the, the commercials that we see over the next couple of weeks. Somebody mm-hmm. should put uh, that music in there. My mama told me you better shop around. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, shop around. Me oh, and my goodness. oldies, that's me. Okay, yeah. so okay. this is the time of year. And if they say, for instance, you think you've got your retirement planning all set to go and everything's looking good and, and you need help in this area. Sharice has done this for years and she is the person to see. Give her a call. 833-368-3680. Again, 833-368-3680 or ZinniaWealth.com, Z-I-N-N-I-A Wealth.com. Sharice, that is all the time we have on this one. I'll give you the last word. Listen, we talked a lot this week. You know, we had our mayor in here talking about some taxes and the ballots, and we conveyed that in with retirement planning. So you can tune back into our Retirement Coffee Talk podcast on Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, you name it, right there on your phone and on our website to hear that. And really just digging into this Medicare thing and the Federal Reserve and what's going on with the interest rates and people are really nervous about Wall Street, what's going to happen next and this election. So tune in and catch some of the stuff maybe you missed out on. And as usual, live by design and not by default. And we'll see you here next week. This has been Retirement Coffee Talk. To find out more about how the strategies we've discussed on this program can build the retirement you've been wanting, call Zinnia Wealth at 352-368-3680 or visit us online at zinniawealth.com. Sharice Rivers is an investment advisor representative of Zinnia Wealth Advisory, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Exposure to ideas and financial vehicles discussed should not be considered investment advice or recommendation to buy or sell any financial vehicle. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Investments can fluctuate and when redeemed may be worth more or less than when originally invested. Financial professionals are not licensed in all 50 states. To find out if Sharice Rivers is licensed in your state, please contact their office. Zinnia Wealth Advisory, LLC, is not affiliated with nor endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency and does not provide legal or tax advice. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. Any client experiences discussed during this show are unique to that client. They are not meant to imply or suggest you will experience the same results. By contacting us, you may be provided with information about insurance and annuity products offered through Sharice Rivers, NPN Insurance License Number 8718011.